Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's Dan here, your storage auction treasure hunter guy. If you saw my last video, I made a prediction that I wasn't going to be able to do any storage auctions for a little while because I bought four units uh, last week. I have uh, now a ton of stuff to process and to liquidate and um, just uh, ran out of space until uh, you know I can and get rid of all these, these things that I've uh, accumulated. Uh, anyhow, I just want to let you know that I've uh, been doing a really good job of getting rid of this stuff. Uh, sales are going really well, making some good money, and I believe I'm going to be back on the auction trail in a, just another couple of weeks. And Russell had sent me this, uh, this a printout of his email, and as you can see, there's a lot of information that Russell was asking for, and I'm happy to provide that information. I figured I would uh, create this video to address Russell's questions, so let's get right to it. All right, so one of the things, the first question Russell asks me here is that when you buy a unit, you have a short amount of time to clear it out, and you need the uh, space and the room to process everything that you're taking out of the unit. And yes, Russell, that's absolutely correct. When you buy a unit, everything in there is yours. You've got to clear it out in its entirety. And um, a storage facility will charge $100. I've even gone to auctions up to where they charge $250 per room as a clear-out deposit. You get that deposit back when you clear the room out. A lot of times they'll give you 24 hours, sometimes 48 hours. I've gone to uh, auctions before where they give me more than 48 hours if I've purchased multiple rooms. Oftentimes I find that a facility manager is willing to work with you, give you a little leniency to make sure you can clear a room out. But there's no doubt about it, I often say that some of your best units are the ones you wind up not buying because if you buy, bite off more than you can chew, you're putting yourself in a very tenuous uh, situation. And when I say tenuous, I mean a situation where you will not give yourself sufficient enough time to clear the unit out, uh, let alone process everything. Now one, one strategy, secretive strategy, that not too many people know about or not too many people even think about is if you do go ahead and buy a really big unit filled with stuff and you have neither the time nor the space to bring all that stuff to to process it, you can engage in an occupancy agreement with the storage facility for at least one month which will give you a 30 day window to deal with everything. In other words, buy the unit, just keep everything where it is, rent it for a month from the storage facility, that gives you 30 days to process everything, clear things out, gives you the elbow room you need to deal with everything in that unit. Now obviously when you do do that, you're going to be adding to your overhead because you're going to be renting it from the storage facility. So depending upon where you are in the country and what the storage facility is charging on rent for that unit, you know, you're, you're looking at maybe another $100 to $300 in overhead. But if you buy right and you're able to sniff out a bargain or look for the clues of value, as I like to say, when buying a unit, unit and not overpay, then the added expense of the, you know, renting the unit for a month to process the stuff is well worth it. Of course, if you don't want to go that route, then you need some place to bring the stuff. So obviously you need the space. It's very important. Buy wisely. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Next question here, Russell asks me if eBay is still a good place to liquidate your treasures. I have an eBay store. I liquidate a ton of stuff on eBay. I've been on eBay for a long, long time. I've recently been promoted to a power seller. Um, you know, I'm in, I'm in good standing with eBay. I have a 100% positive feedback rating. From what I understand, and I cannot substantiate this because I'm by no means an eBay authority, but I understand that eBay is, is um, transition, transitioning from their core competency, which is people, regular folks like you and I, who look to liquidate treasures on their website, and that they're paying more attention to established retailers like a Best Buy, like uh, you know stores, established retail locations who also use uh, eBay to, uh, to sell merchandise. Again, I'm not positive of this, but because I'm in good standing with eBay, because I'm a power seller, because I've been e on eBay literally for over 15 years now, I still find it for me to be a fantastic way to move my merchandise. I also use Craigslist a lot. eBay is a great website for selling the more highly valued, easy to ship items, whereas I rely Craigslist, um, I rely upon Craigslist to sell uh, appliances, furniture, uh, hand trucks, bulky items. I love Craigslist selling because cash is king and I'm appealing to a local market who will come to my place and buy the stuff I have on Craigslist for cash. I want cash 
in my pocket when I go to auctions. I love always selling stuff for cash, but again, eBay, I do all PayPal on eBay. Nothing wrong with PayPal, taking credit cards from other people all around the world. It's a great way to do business. Also, Russell, I might recommend to you that you also want to look at getting a, a, a booth at a flea market. Um, I could do flea market booths for about 100 bucks for the weekend, which is very reasonable. A yard sale is also a great way to go. I've set up yard sales uh, right here on my driveway where I've turned, you know, stuff that I've had trouble moving. I've turned that into five, six, seven hundred dollars cash in a weekend, which is terrific. So those are some outlets you want to use. I'm no authority on eBay, although I do offer a couple of eBay components in my training material. So if you do want to learn how to be a storage auction treasure hunter and how to liquidate using Craigslist, eBay, and other outlets, then absolutely get my training material. Um, it'll help you out in that, uh, in that respect. Uh, Russell also wants to know what's the best or quickest way to sell stuff. Uh, Russell, when I am um, listing stuff on Craigslist or making connections at flea markets, I maintain what I call a buyer's list. Um, just yesterday I spoke with somebody who's going to be coming by on Saturday who two times in the past have, has already bought, uh, purchased lots and bins I had of CDs, DVDs, and um, um, you know um, other cassette tapes and things. And he is one of my established buyers. So whenever I come across that kind of item, his name is Ron. I call Ron up, tell him what I have. Ron comes down, we negotiate a price, and off it goes. Um, I have people on my buyer's list who look for sports memorabilia. I have people who look for Chippendale furniture. I have people who look for vintage clothes. Every time I deal with someone who comes by to buy, purchase my stuff, I put them on my buyer's list. When I come across that stuff, I call them first before I do any listings. That's always a great way to sell stuff. Also, Russell, I might want to say that you need to develop an eye for value when you go to storage auctions. You need to be able to buy low enough. The fastest way to be able to liquidate your treasures is to sell them at wholesale prices. The best way you can sell at wholesale prices is if you or when you buy your stuff low enough. And if you're not able to buy your stuff low enough, that means that you haven't yet developed a good eye for value. I train you how to develop that eye. And listen, it's okay to walk away from a storage auction without buying a room. The last thing you want to do is go to a storage auction as a motivated buyer. If you go as a motivated buyer, you're automatically putting yourself in a position of weakness to overpay for a room that won't uh, prove profitable to you. Buy smart, buy smart, buy smart. That's what you need to do in order to sell your stuff low enough. If your pricing is low enough, you can liquidate the stuff uh, profitably at wholesale prices and still make money. That's what I do. That's what you'll need to do. Now, the only exception to that rule is when you come across highly coveted and what you know will be profitable collectibles or antiques. In those cases, I'm not a motivated seller. I hold on to those things until I find the, the, the buyer who's willing to give me the price I want. Otherwise, for stuff like appliances, furniture, you know, industrial uh, merchandise, other things, clothes, dump it quickly at wholesale prices, get rid of it. That's the key to profitability in this field is fast turnover. You don't want to sit on things too long unless, like I said, those items are something special and it makes sense for you to sit on them long enough to find a buyer who's going to give you the price that you deserve for that item. Partnership. If you know somebody who's enthusiastic like you, who's not afraid to work, and of course somebody you trust, then by all means, partnerships are good. But partnerships can also be hellacious if you get involved with the wrong person. So make sure if you get engaged with a partner, it's somebody you know, like, and trust, somebody who's willing to work as hard as you, and somebody who you don't have to worry about always looking over your shoulder. And finally, Russell wants to know, how are we able to sell our stuff if this economy is so shitty? Listen, Russell, there's, there's a market for everything. Not everything you sell is going to be profitable. Bad economy, be damned, as long as you're buying smart and you can sell your stuff low enough, it doesn't matter if the economy is still weak. Okay? There's all sorts of stuff that I sell. Flatware, kitchenware, bowls, pots, I mean all sorts of obscure crap. And uh, you know, because I've been able to buy it low enough where I could sell it and, and, and it makes sense at, at, at a low enough number. But again, it's all because I've developed this eye for value. 
Another thing you could do is if you're having trouble liquidating certain items, you can take them to a Goodwill store or a Salvation Army. Give it to them for write-off receipts. You can write the value of those merchandise, of that merchandise off against your tax return. And if you're looking to do this as a business, which Russell, you told me you are. In his case, he's looking to turn this into a business. That's a perfect way to write off um, uh, against your taxable profit is when you make donations, get those write-off receipts. So if you're having trouble selling stuff and it's getting in your way, donate it for write-off receipts. All right, um, I'm sorry if this video was a little long-winded. There was a lot of information Russell was uh, looking to get. I'm happy to help you, Russell, and I'm happy to help anybody else. If you do have a question and you want to um, uh, ask me whatever your question, concern, or pressing issue is, certainly send me an email. I'll try to do my best to give you, uh, you know, a, a good answer based on my own experience. So if you're not, um, you know, if you do have a question, email me right now or comment below. You can connect with me on Facebook at also, uh, facebook.com slash awesomeauctionprofits. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe now. And if I've said anything in this video that you like, please click, uh, click the like button below. That's it. I feel that this video has gone on too long, so I've got to sign off. My name is Dan. I'll talk to you guys soon.